I'm Ross Chast. I'm a, a, a longtime cartoonist for The New Yorker, lifelong New Yorker. My parents were lifelong New Yorkers. It just, just, and then before that, it was Russia, and before that, I don't know what. Um, so, uh, um, I, I wrote a book about dreams, and I wasn't planning on doing that. I was actually starting to work on another book, and it was just one of those things. The book was not working out, and I tried it like this, and I tried it like that. And while I was like fighting with this other book, I was starting to, I've always been interested in dreams, and I'll talk about that a little bit more um, later, but uh, I was starting to uh, sort of cartoonify my dreams. And um, by, by that I mean that I would take a dream that I thought was funny and sort of uh, put it into panels and make a cartoon out of it. Never making, never inventing any details, but taking away the extraneous parts and focusing on what made me laugh. Or as the book progressed, um, you know, sometimes it was, you know, just stuff that was just totally weird. Uh, uh, as dreams, you know, dreams are kind of weird. Um, but, but, uh, so I started drawing up my dreams for Instagram, and I was enjoying doing it so much that at some point in this, I, I told my editor, I think I really want to write a book about dreams and put the other book, you know, kind of give it the heave ho. Um, and so, so I did. So that's what this book is. Um, oops. Uh, and these are two of my favorite quotes. Um, about dreams, um, the unconscious has a rare sense of humor. It makes delightful, ingenious puns, jokes, and comic impressions. We are all creative geniuses in our sleep. And uh, that's a quote from this guy, Harry Wilmer, who is a Jungian and has written many books about dreams, and he's a, a psycho uh, a psychiatrist. And also, um, I read uh, Memories, Dreams, Reflections um, by Carl Jung, and this was one of my favorite quotes. Uh, For me, dreams are a part of nature which harbors no intention to deceive, but expresses something the best it can. And sometimes that is very weird. Um, <laughs> according to many people, dreams as a conversational topic should be avoided, along with aches and pains. Um, <laughs> Only shrinks are interested, uh, and maybe not even them. Um, maybe it's because, as Heraclitus once wrote, the awake share a common world, but in sleep each turn to a private world of our own. This private world aspect means that something I might learn in a dream, like I can fly, you know, down Broadway just by going like this, or like willing myself, you know. Um, and swimming my way down Broadway, hovering 10 feet off the ground, it might not be scientifically accurate. Um, ever since I was a kid, I was interested not only in the content of my dreams, but the fact that one dreamed at all. Why didn't I switch off when I fell asleep, like TV channels did at the end of their programming day, which they used to, which they don't anymore, but um, I remember being fascinated by test patterns. Well, what is that? Um, it's, <laughs> Uh, I, was st I still kind of like looking at it. Anyway, um, uh, what was this mishmash of stuff that projected itself inside of my head, like my own weird theater that showed nonsensical movies on a nightly basis? And this is still, you know, the jury is still out. There's a million um, different theories, but nobody really knows why we all do this every single night. Um, and this was the first dream that I posted and it was, it just, it made me, it made me laugh. I don't know if it, um, so, okay. My mother and her friend, a man named Bissell, had, co <laughs> had come into, <laughs> no such person, um, had come into possession of O.J. Simpson's famous glove. Um, this Bissell guy telephoned her to tell her of his great business idea. We can rent it out for parties. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm wearing it right now. And my mother had a different opinion. That glove belongs in a safety deposit box. Um, um, 
Oh, and one of those, one of those things, one of those days, for some reason, I was suddenly responsible for an infant girl. Also, I was not wearing any pants. Um, the baby was heavy and needed a diaper. A woman offered to lend me pants, but there were strings attached. These were my grandmother's. They're very special to me, so I want them back. Now, you'll notice that this drawing has a scrawl all over it. Um, in my book, I do have a section of celebrity dreams, but they're not celebrities that I necessarily think much about in my conscious life. But Danny DeVito showed up. So I dreamed that I was married to Danny DeVito. I like Danny DeVito, he's hilarious, but he's not someone I think about very often. In my dream, he lay with his head in my lap, gazing up at me with adoration. I thought, I'm not in love with him, but it's nice to be adored, so maybe this will work out. <laughs> but I have to tell you this crazy story. So when I was doing some touring for this book, um, I was about to go on the air at WNYC, and the person who was on before me was Danny DeVito. <laughs> And he was with his people from his publisher, and I was with some people from my publisher, and they thought it would be really fun to give him um, my book. And uh, so he signed it and, and embraced me, and we were hugging, and I was thinking, this is just so fucking weird. I just, I just I, you know, I, I, um, and he signed it, oh, so nice, love, Danny DeVito. So... Uh, uh, and this is, you guys know what a lucid dream is, right? Uh, a lucid dream is when you're having a dream, but you sort of know that you're dreaming. Um, so, but you don't necessarily wake up. Um, so this was, I was on the subway and my phone rings. Um, Hello? And it's my husband. And he said, you sound weird. Why do you sound weird? And I said, of course I sound weird. I'm dreaming. <laughs> um, you know, I'm gonna skip this because it's too long. It's, it's, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, all right. Um, as I was walking into my dentist appointment, Henry Kissinger was walking out. <laughs> I sat in the chair. The dentist gave me a shot of Novocaine, which was painful. Even though it was just local anesthesia, I went into the very rarely experienced dream within a dream. I dreamed within a dream that I was in the dentist chair in Tel Aviv. Um, then, still within the dream, I woke up and the dentist said, I'm not going to be able to work on you today. My hands are, are too sore from the stress of working on Kissinger. <laughs> and he showed me his hands and the, yeah, they looked very sore. Um, and I told him about my Tel Aviv dream and he, he, then we had this whole talk about like <laughs> how silly dreams are. Um, and uh, yeah, dreams versus reality. And I said, you can tell this is reality. And I don't know. Um, so sometimes there's just like something weird I learn in a dream that I have to share with you. Um, I dreamed that a slang word for penis was Sharon. Um, I don't know, you know. Uh, um, this is uh, recurring dreams. It's, it's just, it's getting, okay. Uh, tooth issues, uh, high school crises. Um, oh, Elizabeth Taylor, another thing I learned in a dream. I learned that Elizabeth Taylor always traveled with her own stove when she went on tour. And amazingly, this detail was the amazing part. Her stove, her travel stove, looked exactly like the tiny stove in my apartment in the city. So, um, and uh, okay, hot. Uh, my friend Patty and I decided that we were gonna eat at a divey Chinese restaurant and we were seated at a, at a communal table. Patty ordered some pastel colored gelatin squares. I ordered mugugai pan because I knew it would be safe. This is what my parents always ordered. Every time in a Chinese restaurant, mugugai pan, mugugai pan, mugugai pan. Um, some waitresses came over and wrapped me from head to toe um, in hot towels. It was some sort of free spa treatment. 
Um, this made me laugh and laugh for some reason, but between bouts of laughing, I said, if I was chilled, I'd enjoy this, but I'm not. <laughs> um, and this, this dream, I included it because it's an excellent example of bodily sensations creating the dream. I woke up, I was like tangled in blankets and hot. Um, um, okay, uh, I'm going to, uh, no, 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 okay, this is good. Uh, the Baku, uh, according to Japanese legend, the Baku is a creature that eats bad dreams. It has an elephant's trunk, a rhinoceros eyes, an ox tail, and tiger paws. A child in Japan who's having a nightmare would wake up and say three times, Baku-san, come eat my dream. Then hopefully everything would be good, the kid would go back to sleep. However, you didn't want to call him on him too frequently because if eating the nightmares didn't satisfy him, uh, he would eat the summoner's hopes and dreams wow. and desires. So he wanted to be careful with the baku. Um, and uh, oh, and this is the last one here um, to save humanity. Um, and this is because I, I evidently I want to, you to think I'm a very good person, which I'm not. Um, uh, <laughs> There was a water shortage on Earth, but I had a genetic defect where I made tons of saliva. Um, I kept people alive by drooling into their mouths. Everyone was grossed out, but it was take my drool or die. And uh, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>